Chronic kidney disease, or CKD, is defined by the presence of kidney damage or decreasing glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, for three months or longer, no matter what the cause. GFR is, best gen is the best generalized index of kidney function and health. The normal GFR in a young healthy adult is about 125 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared. GFR less than 60 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meters squared is the criteria for chronic kidney disease. The causes of kidney injury are classically divided into three categories. One, pre-renal, usually due to dehydration or poor blood flow to the kidney. Two, intrinsic renal disease, damage to the kidney itself, or three, post-renal, which is usually related to obstruction or damage due to poor flow or outflow from the kidney itself. Any cause of kidney injury, if sufficiently severe or long-standing, may lead to persistently abnormal kidney function, and therefore CKD. As an example, a patient with severe heart failure may have recurrent or prolonged acute kidney injury, AKI, due to reduced effective arterial blood flow to the kidney, for example, pre-renal disease, over time, even if cardiac function and renal perfusion pressure improve, glomerular filtration rate or the GFR may never fully recover back to normal. In addition, whatever the initial cause of kidney disease, a sustained decrease in the GFR can produce adaptive hyper hyperfiltration within the remaining functional nephrons or kidney cells. Over time, this overloaded function may lead to further injury and worsening of the CKD or chronic kidney disease. Adaptive hyper, in, hyperfiltration was originally defined by increasing creatinine clearance that was seen in 1931 by Joliffe and Smith when they placed dogs on an all-beef diet. A decade later, Brenner and colleagues described the mechanism of hyperfiltration of the kidney in diabetic individuals, assuming that it was related to an increase of glucagon level. It's from these two studies that the nephrology community adopted the low-protein diet recommendations. However, Ferretio and his colleagues discovered that the increased kidney filtration function is actually related to an increased ketone bodies or ketone body pr production present and not due to the increased protein intake itself. It's essential to understand that the high protein diets themselves, when carbohydrates are restricted, do not cause kidney damage. In fact, kidney function improves based on the presence of nutritional ketosis. In uncontrolled diabetics, however, where insulin is high and ketones are high, the increased filtration rates will occur due to damage from the glomerulus seen in normal adaptive hyperfiltration secondary to the insulin damaging the microscopic tubules of the kidney. However, I have yet to see in my 22 years of private clinical practice many bodybuilders who use large amounts of natural protein with kidney disease. There are four general pathologic markers that point to the type of kidney damage that can occur. One, damage to the glomerulus due to diabetes, autoimmune disease, systemic infection, drugs, or cancer. Two, vascular diseases due to atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, ischemia, which is poor blood flow, vasculitis, which is, vasculitis, which is inflammation of the blood vessels, or thrombotic microangiopathy, which is due to small, tiny clots in the microscopic tubules. Tubular interstitial disease is number three, which occurs due to things like urinary tract infections, kidney stones, obstruction, and drug toxicity. And four, cystic diseases like polycystic kidney disease. It's well known that one of the most profound complications of diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, is damage to the kidney and the very small arter arteries within the kidney. These small arteries and capillaries in the kidney act as your body's filtration system. Chronically high levels of insulin produced in type 2 diabetes and high levels of insulin dosed in type 1 diabetes and those eating a standard American diet damage this filtration system of the kidney, causing it to lose the ability to adequately filter and retain the microscopic protein and this is lost progressively over time. As the blood sugar and insulin levels continually rise over time in patients with diabetes or prediabetes, damage to this delicate filtration system of the kidney occurs. Unfortunately, in our society today, this is a very common problem and is referred to as nephropathy. The high insulin levels are also the driver of high blood pressure, which is a secondary cause of damage to the filtration and vascular systems of the kidney. We knew back in 1972 from Sipperstein and his colleagues where they identified patients with diabetes that had thickening of the basement membrane and the endothelium, which is the lining of the, the blood vessels in the small tubules or the renal glomeruli within the kidneys. In fact, 98.6% of diabetics tested had thickening of the areas in these membranes and endothelium of their kidneys. Damage to these specialized filtering blood vessels and tubules of the glomerulus cause them to become more leaky, and microscopic protein loss begins to occur through the kidney. It starts with a, mic 
starts with microscopic proteins being leaked out. This loss of important protein in the blood is called albuminuria or microalbuminuria. Microalbuminuria is a loss of microscopic protein into the urine, and it's the first warning sign that further damage to the kidney can and will occur without making a significant change to lower blood sugars, lower insulin, and improve blood pressure. This is, this is measured as an albumin to creatinine ratio or an ACR and should be, t should be less than about 30 milligrams per gram of urine. As of today, it's not, not, it's not totally clear how the basement membrane is damaged at the microscopic level. However, there is evidence that elevated insulin has both a physical and immune type effect that stimulates oxidative stress, atherogenesis or, or blockage of the ar small arteries, immunoglobin release, as well as formation advance, a formation of advanced glycation end products leading to endothelial or, or blood vessel wall damage. Recent research by Pop Poplowski and colleagues revealed that a ketogenic diet effectively repairs and or completely reverses this albuminuria. Over the last 18 years using ketogenic and carnivorous diets in my clinic, I've seen hundreds of patients improve and reverse this early damage to the glomerulus of the kidney, lowering their ACR to less than 30 milligrams per gram of urine. Additional research by Kundu and colleagues demonstrate that the ketogenic lifestyle slows the inflammation, the fibrosis, and the mitochondrial dysfunction commonly associated with kidney, uh, chronic kidney disease. This is done primarily through inhibition of ROS, NF, KB and the P2 signaling. Fascinating research demonstrates that within 24 hours of making a dietary change, injury to the kidney's tubular system begins to improve and to heal. The ketogenic diet provides increased antioxidant defenses through GPX and SOD activity, reduces inflammatory products causing further damage due to interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and MCP1, and upregulates the expression of P50 NK, NKB, improving cellular infiltration. The ketogenic diet also prevents interstitial fibrosis development within the kidney after using it for longer than two weeks. Microalbumin is randomly spot checked in, in the urine every three months with our diabetic patients and their labs. This level should be less than 30 milligrams per gram of urine when specified, like we specified above or previously. This, when this microalbumin gets above 2,400 milligrams per gram, the person is approaching end-stage kidney failure and may need dialysis. The following example is what I commonly see in a patient with diabetic nephropathy when following a ketogenic lifestyle. For example, a 72-year-old diabetic male presents to my office with a five-year history between 2010 and 2015. His initial microalbumin loss in the urine improved from 2,264 milligrams per gram to 97 milligrams per gram over a period of that five years while following a low-carb or ketogenic lifestyle. The key, however, is in maintaining this lifestyle. If one reverts back to eating the standard American diet, the kidney disease will usually progressively worsen and return, often leading to kidney failure and dialysis. I've placed the references to this information below. If you are interested in getting a copy of my diet, go to my website at docmuscles.com. If this information has been helpful for you, please like and share and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.